Since Kamala Harris didn't really talk about criminal justice reform, but rather criminal injustice, let's look at how Tulsi Gabbard squares up against her. Tulsi worked with represent Republican Representative Tom Garrett to introduce House Bill 1227, which would federally decriminalize marijuana. Look, because of the confusion of state-by-state -state decriminalization in marijuana creates, Representative Gabbard believes that one of, it would highly benefit the American economy if marijuana was just federally decriminalized. In her state of Hawaii alone, banks are encouraged to decline loans to any businesses associated with marijuana sales. And this is killing entrepreneurship and chill vibes. For example, the contradiction that we see currently between state and federal laws on marijuana has created a serious problem for many of our local businesses. I've talked with local bankers in my home state of Hawaii who express great frustration and even confusion about the contradiction between our laws. The fact that our state of Hawaii has legalized and authorized marijuana dispensaries to grow, process, and dispense medical marijuana. Federal law also prohibits banks and credit unions from offering any type of financial services to both businesses and individuals whose financial transactions have anything to do with marijuana. So what this means in a practical term is that our state recognized and licensed medical marijuana dispensary owners, as well as their employees, they can't open a bank account. They can't get a loan from our local bank. The businesses literally have to hold thousands or even millions of dollars of their transactions and conducting their transactions in cash. Businesses that provide services to these medical marijuana dispensaries are also unable to access financial services due to the gaps between federal and state law. She's against the class classification of marijuana as a Schedule One drug. The outrageousness of this comes from the fact that not a single human or animal has been killed by the use of marijuana. Dr. Donald Abrams, who's the chief of oncology at San Francisco General Hospital, has talked about how in the 37 years that he has worked and served as a physician, the number of patients that he's admitted to his hospital with marijuana complications are zero. Physicians have stated that there have been no complications with marijuana use, but we're losing about 130 people a day to the opioid epidemic. But marijuana continues to be classified as a lethal drug and Oxycontin is prescribed by doctors by the pound. And, and, and that is just unacceptable. Okay, I mean, doctors should really know th that they should use the metric system. Okay, if it's good enough for drug dealers, then it should be good enough for the MDs. As of right now, there is only one pharmaceutical CEO that has been arrested for being responsible for the opioid crisis. Lawrence O'Dowd III of the Rochester Drug Cooperative was arrested over the summer. RDC purchases opioid from manufacturers and distributes them to pharmacies across the country. They're basically like the Postmates for narcotics. They're the corporate equivalent of the guy behind the high school wearing a trench coat that can sell you that good, good shit. Now look, I highly doubt that O'Dowd is going to go to some maximum security prison, right? It's not like he, he's a, a, a journalist that published U.S. war crimes. He's just a, a, a CEO, you know, that flooded the market with a highly addictive substance and made them as available as M&Ms at your local Walgreens. But legalization would prove unequivocally that the products peddled by Big Pharma are not as good as the natural medicine that the planet makes. With this legislation, in tandem with the glory of the free market, we can prove that once and for all, making these companies that have suckled at the teats of exploitation go bankrupt. Now, this bill will also reduce rates of recidivism. If you're unsure about what recidivism is, it's basically creating a rehabilitation system that is so bad 
that ex-cons repeat the same behaviors and return to prison. It's like a, a, a recycling program for prisons. You know, it's the pretty much the only thing America is actually excited about recycling. This is like the green old deal, you know, like, and it's not even like a nice green. It's, it's like a, it's like a, like a, like a bad poop green. <laughs>